Oh, good morning and welcome back to the shop. It's been a few days. Um, I took a couple days off to edit a whole bunch of video. You'll see that before you see this, which is fine. So, I'm having a bit of a crisis. These bent pieces, last time you saw, these bent sides came out of the bending form and they're holding their shape really well. But, I have a problem that bugs me. And, uh, it's a, it's a problem I cover, it's gonna, uh, well, it's a problem of irregularity, <laughs> if you see. So, up here in this top bit, can you see the little lump right there, the, the seam that's not uh, quite closed up? Same going down here, and it's on this side as well. It's a lump there. Just didn't clamp very well right there. Um, by now, the glue is hard. Um, and it's just, it's not up to snuff for me. There's another spot, a couple of them down in this area that are not as good as I'd like. So, I think I have to rebend these. I think I have to recut, remake these parts. It's not my favorite option, but at the same time, the outer edges that are the pretty edges were not as pretty as the first pair that I ruined with the uh, the hot pipe bending method. So I'm not super concerned about the waste of the wood. I've got plenty of this maple, but it's the time, it's the effort. But um, I think this project is too important to me to cut the corner and find a way to like fill in those gaps. Or I had thought maybe maybe using a heat gun to heat up the area and then squeeze it together somehow. Um, but I suspect I will not be happy with that solution. Oh, and I just saw another little bit that's interesting. So right up, I don't know if you can see it, but right in this little area, there's a split. The center or the inner ply looks like it cracked and split out. You guys probably cannot you guys probably can't see that there. Oh yeah, you can. You can probably see that. You can see how the center plies right here, or the inner ply sort of split. So yes, I think, um, well, truth be told, these are the first attempts at bending and gluing up the sides anyways. So I'm okay considering them as tests, much like my first attempts at doing the front and back, I, could, I used those as tests. I didn't even cut them out of pretty wood. This was out of somewhat pretty wood. Made some decent looking sides, but I think, I think I've just made my choice. I have decided I'm remaking those sides, which means we have to cut uh, some more um, strips and sand them to a 16th, steam bend them first, then glue them together, glue them up. Um, and I think part of my sh uh, challenge here was trying to glue all three together at once. I believe I can do them one layer at a time. It might save a little bit of risk. It might not be any, might not be any less trouble. It might be more, it would probably take some more time. Definitely take some more time. Well, I've got another one that's got a split here as well, that bugs me. Okay, so that inner ply split, and so did that inner ply. Okay, so they're both splitting there, so that's not good. That just tells me what I need to do is probably, that was probably the first one that was in the, in the bag, the short, or in the back, in the steamer, the least amount of time. So I'm gonna call these successful test bends. I've learned lessons. I think when I go to glue them the next time, I will do the inner and center, center the, inter, the inner layer and the middle layer first, and then I'll put the pretty skin on second, just to ensure I can focus on just getting one glue joint nice and solid versus trying to get two. Um, if that works, I'll be good. If not, I might have to come up with a better uh, positive and negative bending form time so we'll take you back from that but bring you back when that happens when we're ready for that let's get ready to sand uh oh <laughs> you can't hear you can't see what i was doing i am over here 
Hold on a minute. Sorry. 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 I'm so sorry. All right. I'll do this more. Okay. So, sliced off a few pieces from this board to make some outer strips. Uh, that's shit. What am I doing? This looks like crap. Hold on. We're not using this board. This board looks like poop. I'm building this guitar. I'm going to build it right. I'll be back with you when I uh, get my head out of my ass. All right, I'm using my head again, finally. Sorry, had to reset that. Um, grabbed a pretty board again. This is the other end of the board that made the front and back. Um, and there's some decent grain here. So I'm going to use this to cut off my cut out my pretty sides. Another case of duh, I forgot to hit record. Second set's in. Looks like it's pretty well seamed. It's doing a decent job of it anyway. Um, I don't see any gaps, which is what I was hoping for. I have fewer rubber band coverage here, but it's the seams are tight, so I don't see a need to get too clampy with it. Get clampy with it, by the way, is the title of my hit song from the 90s. We'll take a little bit right here. That'll take care of that one. I just got clampy with it. Do you see what they did there? All right, well, this will sit for another couple hours. done so now the we did the slicing off our curved lining here just some strips that's the mahogany stuff I've got a bunch of these long strips but <clears throat> the original the usual stuff is kind of triangular shaped and a wedge shaped so what I've set up is this tilted the table and I ran a couple of test cuts and it seems to work pretty well so here's how that kind of does so what I've got is just a fence. It's a short fence so the guides can get down as close as possible. And a feather board to just hold this curve because this stuff really flops around. You can see it. It doesn't, it doesn't stay flat very easily. So the feather board is there to ensure that it does. And then the blade is tilted or the table is tilted at about 20 degrees, which is very close to uh, what these guys have here. It's a 20 degree tilt there, roughly. Tilt. So that's what we're aiming for.
so this is that uh, that test panel that we bent up and then I put the filler strip in from a 2x6 um, we're ready to do this for real on uh, the keeper boards and so I've got this uh, really nice quarter sawn Sitka spruce which is traditional that's what was used in it um, so I'm going to take this and this is one of those pieces I'm going to use the CNC for because it'll be easier to get a nice match of the profile and uh, it should work out pretty well. It's quarter sun, so it's going to plane really well. It's going to cut nice. So what I'm doing, this is, this is a weird thickness. This is seven quarter rough sawn. It's just a tiny little bit over inch and three quarters thick. And uh, so what we'll do is I'll cut off about an 18 or so inch piece, 18 and a half or so inch piece. And uh, it's a little wider than we need. We need a four by eight and a half, and this is five and three quarters. So we're going to waste a little bit to that. But what I'll, I'm going to basically get it as close to the size I can get it and save all the scraps because quarter sawn Sitka spruce is super useful for acoustic uh, bracing and all that sort of stuff. So I'll probably keep as much of this scrap as I possibly can because it's good stuff. Um, so what we'll do is we'll cut off a chunk and we'll surface one face so it's nice and flat. And then we'll uh, probably rip it to width and save that off rip for something else. And then mount it up on the CNC and cut one, resaw it off, plane it again, cut another one. Because I need two, one for each front and back. Um, so that's, that's what we're going to do while we wait for this glue here to dry. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Um, this was rough stock. My joiner is set to maybe a 32nd of an inch, if that. So from rough sawn, one pass, perfectly smooth. Edge, one pass, perfectly smooth and square. I like this board, um, so I'm going to keep as much of it as I can. That was pretty cool. I just figured I'd make commentary on such a thing. That's a very rare occurrence, and it's really going to work out well. Okay, we have the uh, the spruce mounted on the CNC. We got our half inch bit. <clears throat> you saw this is basically the same process I did when the two by six was on the was on the bed. So we're going to throw on some ears and. Uh, Hopefully cut out one of these shims. All right, the roughing pass is done as always. Well, Change it out to the the new ball nose bit that I just bought not too long ago. And we'll come over here. And I'm hoping to get it to cut all the way through that roughness on the first shot. So we're gonna set the zero a little bit lower than we might need it. Take this. <clears throat> so one of my later, uh, during the, one of my only Black Friday sale deals that I ended up succumbing to was a Enco sale. One of the things in the Enco sale was this half inch round, uh, round nose spiral uh, end mill. Ball end mill, they call it. 
And this will be my finishing passes cutter. Try to get it enough stick out to be able to reach it with the dust collector and in far enough to be the most effective collet. And we'll switch out the bit. The slow time, the, this is, I'm keeping this one in in real time so that you get an idea of how much effort a bit change is versus, you know, the same cutter for everything. So I'm going to put the dust shoe on anyways, and I'm going to zero this by eye because I know that the straight bit I did just used was longer. So we're going to run to zero real fast. And watch where it stops. It stops way short. And I'm just going to tap it till it's touching. I can tell that it's touching. It's actually pushing a little bit, which is perfectly fine for this task. And then we're going to load our finishing pass g-code and this one I'm gonna I'm gonna pause the camera so that I can get it sped up because the finishing pass is gonna take about a half hour or so so here we go <laughs> So we've got our part. It got. I had to do a couple of weird things, but it's all fine. It'll work out. So it's a bit proud here. So what we're going to do is we're going to resaw this off, leaving that proudness, and uh, that'll get what's that'll be what's the extra thickness that we'll use to to plane the last time. So like you saw the last time. So we're going to set up to plane this or to slice this off on the bandsaw here real quick. machine again and we are ready to run the second half the second side so this will be on for the back or the whichever for the second piece skin we're all set ready to go here we are all right it's time for the glue and vacuuming so I have a feeling my mic may go out, but we're going to try to get going on this and despite that and see if we can't uh, get some good uh, glue happening while you get to catch the audio while I'm doing it. Got a lot of air to move around yet, though. It'll uh, lose vacuum rather quickly here while it's pushing it down here. Get a little tiny bit of squeeze out, which is beautiful. Running our air through here as good as we can looks like it's doing all right that ought to hold up so we'll leave that to dry i have a feeling we have filled in those curves a little bit but it'll be okay and that's that's glued if you can still hear me that was the full process mm -hmm. 